Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Pete. Welcome to Stocks for Breakfast. Today is March 16th, 2020, and it is a Monday after some really big news. It's going to be some tradable news. We're going to talk about this book uh, very briefly because it's going to affect a particular stock pick that I have today, which is a little bit longer term play. Uh, and I actually kind of feel comfortable mentioning the trade today. You know, if you know, most of what I do is short term, anywhere from intraday to a month to three months. I think this might be a little bit longer term play that uh, I'm going to discuss today. One thing we have to keep in mind here today, and, and quite frankly, over everything we're discussing, it's our job to make money in the volatility of the market. <clears throat> yes, it's, it's incredibly serious what we're going through. We're, 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 we're facing something that's unprecedented. You know, I don't, I don't know how many of you traded through or lived through 9-11. I did. Um, that was actually one of my first trading offices. Um, I was out on Long Island in, in, uh, in Nassau County by the Roosevelt Field Mall, and the entire office, the, the building, was actually completely surrounded inside my office. We were the only ones with the television then. The financial crisis as well, just un unbelievable. If you look at the VIX, we could even take a look at the VIX, which I think we did recently. Uh, the volatility was just amazing. Those situations were different than this situation. This is a situation that we still don't have an answer to. It's not like really smart people could go into a room, lock themselves in into their mahogany desks and say, how are we gonna fix this? Let's throw more money at it, which we're gonna get into exactly the big news over the weekend and, and the immediate reaction and what's going on now from overnight. This is something that we might never see again in our lifetime the, the, the seriousness of this problem. There's a lot of theories about why it happened. As traders, it's, it's our job. I want to make sure everybody's got their head on straight. It's our job to make money off the volatility. Yes, it's a horrible situation, but I want to tell you this. This is what we do for a living, okay? So we could potentially make enough money in six weeks for the year. That's our job. So let's make sure that we're not feeling guilty. Let's make sure that we're, 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 we're doing what we're supposed to. And, and as traders and as capitalists on Wall Street, we're taking advantage of a very unique situation. It's a, it's a unique situation. It's a dire situation. It's a serious situation. Let's not forget this is our job. And let's be money managers. Let's be risk managers. Let's take advantage of the volatility. And um, I just want to make sure that we're okay with that because I, I got a few emails over the weekend about should I be trading because I feel bad? Yeah, you absolutely should be trading because of the situation. This is what we do for a living. You can't shut your business down. You can't shut how you make a living down because of the situation. And as a matter of fact, this is an opportunity that is an amazing opportunity that offers a lot of money. It's our job to take what we know and go out to the market and make a living. So let's let's go and do that. We're going to talk about uh, obviously the, the the big news overnight. I'm actually going to start to share the screen now, and we'll come back. We're going to um, talk about the big news, which is obviously here was the monster news over the weekend with the Fed slashing rates to zero. Uh, everybody was talking about it last night. It seemed to be very exciting news, uh, and then you wake up to this. So this was about. I don't know, maybe four o'clock yesterday afternoon where they cut the rates to zero. And now you can see um, futures went limit down again. If, if you don't know what limit down means, that basically means that they get to a spot and they stop trading, whether it's limit down or limit up. It happens in both directions. Uh, I think I mentioned in a previous video where that happened in coffee. I believe it was in 95 or 96, the last time I, I was actively trading commodities, which I get, actually takes us back to this book. I'm going to mention it in a few minutes. Um, so we had the, the, the extremes of unbelievable optimism from Friday afternoon coming into today. And I was all prepared today to talk about how we were going to trade uh, today's opening, assuming a much higher opening and, and some levels that we were looking for. Now that's kind of, we're, we're, we're all the way back to where we were Friday afternoon. So we gave back all of the profits that, oh, I shouldn't say profits, all of the price action that we saw on um, uh, yesterday afternoon. So, so we don't need to get into any more depth on news. Normally I'd show a whole bunch of different news stories, uh, but these are really the only two things anybody's gonna talk about, zero interest rates and the market pulling back. And, and these, are, these stories kind of here are, are, are the reason 
I don't know if you, if you know anybody who owns a retail business right now or, or especially a restaurant. Um, there's, there, there's, there's some unbelievable long-term impacts of, of what's happening right now. Um, I've been an entrepreneur my entire life and, and I can't imagine having a restaurant right now and, and people not being allowed to go outside. Uh, but again, it's, it, this is our job. This is what we're going to do. So we have to be tough about it. We have to, we have to be strong minded to pay attention to what we're supposed to do today. So you can actually see here yesterday, um, this is the move that happened yesterday after interest rates were announced uh, down to zero. So we had, we had this monster spike yesterday and um, you can see after the fact, this is a 15 minute chart of the June contracts, which by the way, if you, if you don't trade uh, futures, especially the E-mini futures, the M represents the June month. Okay, so you can see here June. Um, and what that essentially means is that it expires in June and then it rolls out to the next contract, which I believe is the August month. Um, so anyway, you can see that we pulled all the way back, but the significant thing here is this. This dotted line, that doesn't mean it's closed. That means that it's locked limit down and limit down means trading stopped. Um, so that means that there was more selling behind it. It hit, the, it hit the circuit breaker and stopped. That's a pretty big deal. So I'm going to come back to the screen just for two seconds. So what does that mean for today? What does that mean for us? How do we trade? How do we take advantage of, of, of a situation in our business? I, I just I can't stress that enough. This is our business. We are traders for a living. This is our business. Stocks will open today. All things being equal, stocks will open today and that won't be affected. So what do we do? So what I'm going to do today is I'm, I'm going to go through a bunch of stocks as if we were sitting in a room together and, and day trading. Now, again, I, I can't stress this enough. I'm staying away from swing trading calls. I'm, sw I'm staying away from what I think is going to happen over the next few days. Nobody knows. Anybody who tells you that, they're full of beans, okay? I'm trying to put everybody in a position where they can get into my mind with all the experience that I have now over 20 years and say, okay, if Pete and I were in a, in a, in a trading office today, how would we be calling trades across the room? What would we be saying to each other? What would be the highest probability ideas? So I'm going to go back to the screen. We're going to take a look at it from uh, the market perspective, which if you remember in Friday's video, we broke it down a little bit into uh, uh, a question that somebody had about top-down analysis and could you only trade the stock versus putting other stuff into the equation? In other words, if the market wasn't obvious, the answer is yes, you could only look at the stock, but if you look at more such as is the market, the industry, the sector, the sector, the industry, and then the individual stock, you really start to build an argument to have conviction in your ideas. And that's what it takes to be a great trader. And, and when I say great trader, I don't necessarily mean making a fortune. I mean that you pull money out of the market on a regular basis because everybody has different sized accounts. But you could be a great trader with the amount of money you have in your account. Don't let anybody tell you differently. If you pull money out of the market on a consistent basis, that means you're building great arguments. You're saying, if this happens, if this happens, if this happens, if this happens, I feel good about that trade. If this happens, if this happens, I'm going to get out for these reasons. All right, so we're going to go back to the charts. Let's pretend that we're in the trading room this morning and we're going to watch how the market would unfold and what we would do. I think it'd be kind of a cool way to, to get ready for um, planning in your own stocks uh, what to watch at the end of the day, uh, excuse me, during the day. So. We're, gonna, we're just going to go right over to the, uh, we're going to stick with the 15 minute charts. We're going to look at a couple of days because that's really the only charts that I've been looking at right now. And um, obviously, I'm going to pull this over a little bit. That's, that's actually where we closed on Friday. Friday was a monster move to the upside um, into the close. And if you remember on Friday's video, we actually talked about the scenarios that we were looking for, uh, for potential opportunities to get long. And we were looking to be a buyer. Uh, this trading range over here, we thought this was the bottom and we didn't see it. We actually went gap down again uh, and ultimately ended up having a couple of more days of a pause and closing really strong. So what am I actually looking at? I'm actually looking at a couple of different levels. Well, we could definitely say that's a price level. Now, again, this is kind of advanced, but this is if we were trading in the room together. This is what I'd be looking at. We, we discussed kind of last week, I don't use this price at all despite that being where it printed, and I talked about why. Imagine going into it, uh, you, you own a store, and, and again, I'm actually going to grab the book off the shelf as well so you can take a look at it. Um, one, one jacket trades at that price versus 500 jackets trade at this lower price. So which one is more significant to you? Where 500 jackets trade or where 100 traded? 
You have to pay attention to where the actual price is. What's the right price? Where's most of the price action happening? And you can kind of see here that within this window of a couple of days, this was the 12th and the 13th of last week. Yeah, we closed below it here in the last 15 minutes of the day. We closed above it here in the last 15 minutes of the day, but most of the rest of the day, we had a blip out, a blip out came right back in, a blip out came right back in. This is the right price. And when I say the right price, price is telling you what the right price is. And in this window here, 260 is kind of the area that I'm saying that's where buyers have been stepping in. That's where um, uh, sellers have been able to hold it. Buyers stepped in, tried to push it through, and that ended up becoming a resistance level that we all know as good chart readers in this case, basic technical analysis. If you punch through resistance and pull back, that should be support because buyers were finally able to push through. By the way, that's the most complicated definition you ever need of support and resistance. Where's the last place buyers or sellers did something significant and did they hold it? In this case here, we punched through. This is the first punch through and then the slam dunk after that. So you can see right now the uh, futures are trading at 270, which is kind of like right here. So even though we were all the way up here, we pulled back here, this 260 level is really the level. So the point that I, that I want to make here in how we would actually be trading today Okay, that would be the line in the sand that I'd be saying, okay, if prices get back to that level, which is $10 lower than where we are right now, that's a pretty big move. I'm, I'm hoping uh, if I'm looking for a spot to buy, we're not going to get down there. But let's just say we throw all that out the window. Okay, so that, that's the cues. Let's look at the spider. Uh, excuse me, that was the spiders. Look at the cues. And you can actually see here in the spiders as well, very, very similar type price action where it should now be obvious that I'm training your eye to say, okay, that is that just kind of makes sense, right? It just went in there and popped out and went right back in. This is why I read my charts without using moving averages in the beginning of when I start to look for ideas, because I just, I, you, you, sometimes you don't see these kind of uh, price action patterns. And it's really the only way to really call it a pattern. You don't look, you don't see these patterns because you look, oh, it's above the moving average or it's below the moving average. And, and that's easy. I, it's above, that's all that means. No, it didn't move for two days. That's what matters, okay? So anyway, that's the scenario. We just looked at where it would have to be the level. You would look up the same levels in the stocks that you're trading. So I want to go a little bit deeper and I want to, I want to dive into how can you trade? Um, I don't want to say aggressively because everybody misconstrues what aggressively means. Aggressively to me means more share size, hold longer and more positions. That's what aggressively means. It doesn't mean that you do something you wouldn't normally do. It means that there's a better opportunity. So let's actually look at ExxonMobil and we're going to take a look at it. I want, I want to briefly go over how I'd be analyzing whatever stock uh, I happen to be trading today. I'm doing this so that you could, you could visualize how to do it in your stock. So again, with everything that I'm watching, I would be normally looking at yesterday's high and low. So here's, this is actually a really good example. This is yesterday's, this is Thursday's high. And this is Friday's high at ExxonMobil. We're not taking, we're not putting into the equation the longer term picture right now, which is bearish, but that, will, that would add to the argument. But since we're sticking right now with the mostly short term time frame, which is the last two days, I want to make that clear, the last two days, we're looking at the previous day's high, we're looking at the previous day's low, and then ultimately what that means for initiating a new position. And I don't know why my lines are having a problem here today. So essentially what we're looking at is the first thing today, let's say the market opens, we're looking at yesterday's high, however you determine that high is. Okay, right away we failed at the previous day's high. That's a big deal. We tried, we actually traded right after, so you gotta figure this is where it closed and that's where it opened, right? That's Thursday's close, that's Friday's open. This big 15 minute candle is actually red because the open is all the way up here. So we closed here Thursday, opened here. So this is a giant move higher, and we failed immediately at the previous day's high. Something to pay attention to, right? So if you draw, if you go down to shorter time frames, you'll be able to see right away. Even within those shorter time frames, we failed right away. So now you have a decision. If we're looking and we're looking to put a trade on, you have you have a, you have a choice. You can trade opening range, which we're immediately. This first 15 minute window is a big one. It's 38 to 40 in Exxon, right? So it's a $2 window, maybe even more than that. What was the high there? Uh, 40, yeah, $40 and uh, 11 cents. So you had basically a two, uh, 
$2 opening range window. So you're gonna say to yourself now, okay, if I put a trade on here, what is my profit potential and what's my risk? Well, this is a big window, $2. So, so if you're new to the video, there's two main criteria that we're gonna watch as day traders, specifically talking about day trading because that's where the majority of the opportunity is. It's the opening price and the opening window, the opening range breakout. A lot of people call it the opening range. So that basically means the 15 minute candle becomes, we're looking for a breakout at that 15 minute window, which in this case here, the fail push down, that's this price here, which you can see that the opening range also happened at what was support. So we had support there, so you're not gonna short sell into support, and you had the previous day's low right here as a potential support as well, which would limit your profits. So even if you shorted here, which we said pay attention to where the prices were, right? You could definitely make an argument that this was the right price, right? Because that was yesterday, we only looked out of there for the last half hour. But even if you made that decision, you did not have a very large profit potential. So the, the better trade would have been through this previous low. And you can actually see it's not coincidence. We actually went down and pushed here. So the better trade was through here and down here. So what ends up happening is we wait for the better trade, pushing it through that level, we would drop down to the lower time frames to look for an entry that risk was manageable. And then we would go back to the higher time frames looking for a spot to hold that trade until. In other words, we'd look for an area of the higher time frames are still going well offered, well offered. In that case, higher, uh, lower high and lower low. So let's drop down to the five minute chart there at that window and see what the entry would have been. So not surprisingly, we got down to that support level, right? Not surprisingly, this was the previous day's low. We punched through it, stopped, and went back. So right here, you have, you have a choice of two different entries. You actually have three entries right here. Just I want to make these things super clear to you. You could take this swing high. Again, if you're not familiar with the terminology, a swing high is a high with two lower highs on each side. That's either an entry or an exit signal, which in this case would be an entry signal. So that would be the first entry signal below this candlestick here. This would be the second entry in here below, the first close below this level or you can wait for this inside candle breakdown and end up having this nice move to the downside. So the quite next question comes in, when would you have held the trade? Now, again, I just want to get clear here. Nothing drives me crazier than the million people out there saying, I would have done this. I would have done this. And look how much money I would have made. I would have made. That's not what I'm trying to do here. What I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to prep you to say, okay, in the stocks that I'm watching when the market opens today, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not prognosticating, or I'm using a big word like that. I'm not, I'm not trying to make myself sound smart about what happened on Friday. I'm trying to prep you for how to look at your stocks today and tomorrow and tomorrow. If I give you the strategy and walk you through the tactics, you're going to, you're going to feel like you have control over what happened. So I, I want to make that clear. I'm not saying this for what could have happened. I'm saying this for how you can trade tomorrow. Cause when I first started trading, I could show you notes I, just like everybody else. I'd be looking at charts nine o'clock at night and saying, my gosh, it was, why didn't I see it? It was so easy. There it's unbelievable. There's the flag. There's the breakout. And, and you're like so annoyed that you see all the trades nine o'clock at night. And, and I start, why am I not seeing this when the market opens? I should be seeing this when the market opens and making easy money. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to help you see this before it happens so that you have these if then scenarios in your head, if this happens, okay, what's the real price? What price does it need to get through? What are the odds of it going through that level? If it does get through that level, what's the profit potential? Those are the kind of things that I can help you with. And that's really where coaching comes in, right? You, you, you try and cut your learning curve down by going and asking questions to somebody who's a little bit further down the road from you, right? So again, we'll go right back into this chart and then we'll look at one other example. We don't need to watch 50 of them because it's kind of the same thing over and over again. So you had three different entries here if you drop down to the fifth, to the five, but then the, the question comes in, how do you know when to hold your profits to? So you see that we jump back out to the 15 minute chart. So your entry price is one time frame, then you go back out to the higher time frame to look for signs of the higher time frame continuing and then something changing. So we end up getting a large red bearish candle here, right? Which in my terminology, we know that's a energy candlestick followed by a almost an inside candlestick here. What's the low here? 35 and, uh, excuse me, yeah, 35 and 3502. So this technically is an inside candlestick. So, well, actually, no, it's not. It's basically 
it's close enough. But the, the point I'm making here is something changed. So we pushed down and this was no longer lower lows, lower highs, and also closed above the open. So the higher time frame changed, which should alert you to tighten up your trailing stop. And you can see what, it, what do we end up getting in the opposite direction? We end up getting well bid, well bid, well bid. So 45 minutes of buying, but you could avoid it giving back these profits, paying attention to what's going on in the higher time frame. The higher time frame changed because if you look here, we had well offered, well offered, well offered, well offered, well offered. All good to hold those trades short until something changes, something changed. That's the key I wanted to walk you through, okay? When something changes, you move up your trailing stop, or if you want, you can even end up getting out. Uh, so let's just take a look at one other stock doing the same type of analysis. Oh, actually, I'm, this is a good one. Absolutely nothing happened in this stock for two days. Nothing. No reason to get involved in this stock at all. Again, that's where you save money, all right? Nothing to do. You look at the stock, two full days, it was basically an inside day. Two full days. Paying attention to those kind of things, that's gold, right? If you look at the other stock, we actually waited for it to break out before we did anything. We, in this case, breakdown. I, I use breakout, breakdown similarly. Uh, let's see if we could just find one more that's worth talking about. Oh, okay, this is a good one here. So again, keeping an eye on what we're talking about as what we believe is the previous high and low on top of the opening range. So this is the previous high based on what we just discussed where most of the price action is occurring. We immediately open up above the previous high. So right away we have buying. Now we know, okay, we're going to be looking for the previous day support to hold. We actually pushed down and went through it, but came right back above it. So that's also something that I pay attention to a lot. You punch through, it couldn't hold it. Punch through, it couldn't hold it. That number is significant. What happened here? Punch through, couldn't hold it. Punch through, couldn't hold it. That's significant. Right here, we opened above, punched through, came right back, couldn't hold it. So this line in the sand matters, but we also have another one. We actually now have the opening price for today, and this gets into how to manage your trades today. There's the opening price. Remember, that's it's, this candle's red because that's the opening price right there. So that means something, and that means something now. Those are two significant prices. We need to get out of either one of those for it to matter. Now, we're going to add something to the argument here is the fact that most of today's price action, again, other than this little blip down, traded through, came right back, traded through, came right back. So this is, this is what matters. Most of this day's price action is bullish because it's above the previous day's high. Adding to the argument a little bit, right? It's above the previous day's high, that matters. It's above the previous day close, that matters. So you add it to the argument. So this would be a stock you'd be looking to be bullish in in this short time time frame. So here's the opening price and we're waiting for, we're not looking to be short, we're waiting for it to be above this significant level. And finally, all the way in the afternoon around 145, we get above there. So now we're looking for it to stay above the opening price. You'll, if you, the more you do this, the more you're going to learn. It's, it's, it's just a magnet for prices. So what do you do with today? You're looking for yesterday's high, yesterday's low, today's opening price, today's opening window. Keep it that simple. So what I want to do is I want to come back to, um, I'm going to come back to the screen really quick. I'm going to talk about this book, which is You Can't Lose Trading Commodities. Obviously, I bought this in the... Um, uh, mid nineties, actually, when I first started trading commodities. And I want to talk about one stock that I'm going to pull up on the screen um, that a lot of people are talking about right now. It is Oxy. And even Carl Icahn, I'm actually going to put this on the monthly chart just to give us some perspective. Even Carl Icahn um, is saying that some businesses are giving stocks away. And this actually happens to be one of the stocks that he mentions. And you can see that the last time this stock has been at this level and every time it has gotten down to this level, the stock actually started 19, was it 68, February 68 here. Um, this is the level that it really, the whole point of this book that I want to get across is that it, it basically talks about when commodities get down to the lowest third of their historical price, that's when you should start consider building a position. Now, obviously this is a stock, it's not a commodity, but you understand the, the intent here. A lot of people are talking about buying the stock in the $10 range between five and 10 and it being a much longer term uh, trade. Um, it's something to consider. Again, I, um, I am much more of a tape reader. I'm much more of a trader. I do work position trades or between earning seasons, but that's an interesting play for you to make your own decision on something to consider, something to do a little bit more research on you can see why somebody like Carl Icahn is mentioning the stock in the same breath as 
this is something that's on sale and in the long term for a stock that's uh, over 50 years old, it, it could be something to consider for a longer term hold. So today I just gave you all of uh, drilling it in. If this happens, if this happens, if this happens, then I'm doing this. What reference points to look at? Yesterday's high, yesterday's low, today's open price, today's opening window, and you trade around that. I think today was an exciting uh, conversation about paying attention to what the real price is and use that as support or resistance and ultimately getting to the point where you fully understand I control when I'm going to get involved and this is exactly what I need to see. Okay. When you start to get to that point, trading becomes completely different for you. Now trading becomes, I know what I need to see. If I see it, I feel confident in the position. If it makes money or if it loses money, that's fine because everything is over a large sample size. Remember, we talked about that multiple times. It's not about every trade making money. It's about doing the right thing with your edge over time, and that's ultimately how you make money. I'll actually show you the book that I was talking about. I keep mentioning it. Um, I'll show you that tomorrow about uh, the thing with um, the prices and the real high and the real low. But I'm Pete Renzulli. Thank you so much for joining me today. Every morning, no later than 7.30, this video gets posted. It's actually a little bit early in that. It's about 6.45 right now. I've got to put a little bit of a blog post together with it. Thank you so much for coming and being with me today at Stocks for Breakfast. If you enjoy the video, and especially if you enjoy the lessons, please click subscribe. I think that um, I would definitely appreciate it, and I think that you'll find some value in these daily Monday through Friday videos. When we get to a point when um, the market gets back to, and the world, quite honestly, gets back to normal, We'll definitely start talking about some longer term plays. We'll talk about a little bit more swings back and forth in the market and individual stocks. But right now we're in super short term mode. And if you're a day trader, it's a really good environment to be a day trader. If you are a longer term investor, keep things in perspective. The, the market, it absolutely stinks that the market's going down right now from a longer term perspective. But you need, this is, a, this is a reason you need to have a plan. This is exactly why, right? So. I'm going to sign off now. Thank you for attending Stocks for Breakfast today. Have an awesome day. Be disciplined. Know your levels. Know what you need to see and only take action on those prices. Have a great day.